the people that can't make it. So welcome to the first session for week zero for the open flip. This is kind of the classic thing that I stole from Jim Groom and Alan and Howard and all sorts of other people who had like week zero is set up your tools or set up your toolbox. <laughs> I think you guys used in one of your courses, Alan. Um, we have uh, 169 people signed up for Spanish and 86 wow. signed up for English. So that's a total of 255, which is a nice computer science -y number. So I think we'll just cut it off right there. Um, <laughs> yeah, there'll probably be more signing up. But like we know for a MOOC, the there amount of people that sign up for a free MOOC and the ones that actually show up or do everything is, is a different number. Um, oops, that's fine. So what is 295? Like, what's, what's the significance of 295? What's that, Alan? Your, your voice is really low, Alan. I don't know if it's just me or it's Laura can't hear you as well. It, yeah, it's really low. We don't have the Google Meet control panel like we did before. What's the significance of 295? 255, which is like 255. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's all ones. Yeah, I got you. I got you. I got you. Actually, I think I, I hit that blog post number the other day and I tweeted it out because it's, it's significant as a computer scientist. So welcome, everybody. Um, basically, I invited Laura and Alan, good friends who have done a lot of work before. They do a lot of blogging and a lot of tweeting. I'll, I'll share out uh, links to their to their blogs and their Twitter, etc. as we go forward. The, the kind of the session today I wanted to talk about, welcome, Daniela. Um, Hello. is to talk about one um, I was gonna I'll show this in a bit because I don't want to share any people's email and stuff but I actually processed there was let's see 53 people Alan knows what I'm talking about have already submitted their blog URL and stuff which is pretty good considering you know 255 and 50 have already done it and that's kind of the homework for this week mm -hmm. um, the trick is 13 of those are like I mark them in orange because like their URLs just don't work. So I need to work with you about how to how to fix that. Could be various things like you sent me the I'm logged into blogger URL or I'm logged into WordPress URL. The WordPress is easy. I can fix that. But when you're logged into blogger, it doesn't tell me what the right address is. I'm just going to close this. You, you can snag the magic number, Ken. No fear. You've got a blog post about that, don't you, Alan? No. Uh, from blogger? Yeah. I couldn't figure it out from Blogger. I had one of my It's tricky. Did. Oh, it's you can. you can. I've got it. I'll send oh, okay. it to Ken. What awesome. you have to do is snag snag the RSS, uh -huh. which you can do with a secret code, and then you can pull the URL out of the RSS. So cool. That'll fix it. So there's things like that, or um, they sent me in the blog URL, they sent me their Twitter ID or their YouTube ID or or wix and i'd really really and i'll talk to alan more about that but now basically wix is really hard to pull in because the rss is just not very nice um some people use medium and that's fine um the only thing i learned about medium is you need a dedicated medium blog just for the course there's no way to pull out rss from a tag in medium oh okay. i actually yep. i actually thing. referenced your your old post about that today alan <laughs> I was digging it out, but yeah, you, you can you can get an RSS for a tag site wide, but you can't get an RSS for a tag for a person in Medium. But Medium is a great place to write if you want to write it, and, and the RSS does now come out fine for our syndication. And I've actually set up the site. I'll just uh, quickly give a view of that. Oops, I got to go to the right place, Ken. Theopenflip.com, summer 2020. And uh, one of these days, I'm going to replace the default images that are showing up. Like, it's just the default random images that come with a the theme. But there's already some structure. I'm leaving this center thing to be just the introduction. And I like that it was English and Spanish, right and left. Nice. Um, and the registration's still there for people who still want to subscribe. There's still time because this first homework, which is really homework zero, is this week. And then on the left, there's uh, recent entries in Spanish nice. and recent entries in English. And yeah, if you yeah, don't yeah. have a um, image for your blog post, you get an image of my dog, Bailey, um, which I'm sure Alan will approve. I was gonna use something else, but he, he said Alan we had to use Bailey. And so there's, there's the Spanish and the English. And actually, if you click on this too, 
it will go to all the entries in uh, Flipper's Spanish or the one that's Flipper's English. So you can start to browse around and see people's uh, posts that are starting to show up in here. Nice. Um, you'll also notice that if you click on someone's post, this is important for me, it'll actually send you to their site. Um, it's really, it's not anything bad. We can say that we understand and we keep going. Um, and we can see the post from that person's site. I like to make sure that when you click on somebody's post, you're going out and going to their site and possibly commenting on that site. That's really important for me. And then on the right side, there's a search bar, which might be interesting later. The tag bar might get interesting. Get creative with your tags. So when you're writing on your blog post, you know, hashtag banana or hashtag uh, Felix or hashtag Bailey, whatever you want to put in hashtags in your post, and we'll start populating this cloud. The most recent uh, video of the week in both English and Spanish are on the right bar. And I've still left these posts. Um, they're quite old now from Dave Cormier, but they're very relevant and very good if you want to take a look at those posts by Dave. And then all the other stuff's pretty self-explanatory at the top. I uh, explained that in an email I sent out via tiny letter. So hopefully that's all important. And hopefully there's not many too, too many typos in the letters I'm sending out. That's great. I just sent the one in Spanish out and I forgot to change the subject this morning. I don't know if I'm allowed to make questions. But, yeah, go, go ahead, uh, Mons. A co-worker asked me in the morning if, even if the emails that she got were in English, she can make her blog in Spanish. I don't yeah. know if that is a problem. No problem at all. It was a little bit confusing, Monse, because I had the two signups for Tiny Letter, and some people did the one in the English one, but they really wanted the Spanish one and vice versa before I was smart and changed the text so it's a little more obvious. Um, and some yeah. people were kind of freaked out, so I manually moved them, but it doesn't really matter. Um, I decided to make the site mixed instead of having two separate sites. I kind of like that. I was talking to a colleague today. Some of us are bilingual, and we like to see the Spanish and the English ones all kind of mixed together. Um, and it's just a bigger community as opposed to two separate communities. So whatever they decide, the form's still the same. So that when they go to the form, just say, I'm going to publish in Spanish. Um, and I, sometimes I forget to even look at that part. I just load up their blog and I go, well, it's in Spanish. So I'll mark you as a Spanish flipper or an English flipper, depending on your content. OK. Hey, thank you. Thank you, Monserrat. And, and then feel free to let anyone um, sign up anytime. If anyone's listening from the Tech de Monterey, they always ask me, is this only for us at the Tech de Monterey? And my answer is no, it's for anyone in the world who wants to sign up, they can go and jump into this. Uh, you could sign up next week too. I mean, I'm not gonna stop you. Um, so you might not wanna do it in week seven or something, but if you're a week and or two behind- it's a really great up. topic because when I was like in college, uh, we studied these like flip type of schools with I don't remember the name but was in a school in Eng in Finland that okay. doesn't have homework that mm -hmm. doesn't take like the the matters of subjects like Spanish or math they took like um manual work and start like gardening and with that they learn yeah, about cool. physics about yeah. Yeah, it was super exciting for me reading that. Lovely. No, like kind of project-based learning. My, my two younger boys went to a school here in Guadalajara that was called uh, Colegio Finlandes, and it was based off that a Finland model. And they wouldn't do sessions longer than about 40 minutes, and then they'd take a break. They, they really would reduce the amount of kind of sitting in one spot at the same time, which I think is wonderful. Um, and yeah, they followed a model of no homework at all. Although Mexican culture kind of doesn't like that. So the parents started leaning on them to have more homework because that's what they were used to and things started changing. Um, but that's, a, that's another here and there. But I haven't checked out what they're doing here in Guadalajara lately. Also located in Querétaro. Um, so any, any other questions? Um, I, I'm, everything's open for, for the discussion here. I brought Laura and brought Alan here as friends and experts in blogging and tweeting. Um, I don't know how much videos Laura is doing of loading up videos. I don't think much at all, are you, Laura? Well, I love the 
making playlists and and uh -huh. randomizing my playlist, but I use other people's video. I right, don't make you're doing curation, own. which is a great thing too. Right. That's excellent. So um, what we're asking them to do for this course, just like I did at the other years, you joined me years ago, Laura, I think the last time I did this was four years ago, is um, upload a blog post and then upload an accompanying video, usually of them, or they could do it in Powtoon, or they could do something different. I think it's mm -hmm. more just to, to try something new. A lot of them haven't made videos before, so I think it's a good thing to see them make videos. Often those first videos are very robotic and reading off the screen. And then by the time they do the, the, the week seven, they're much more comfortable and ready to decide, do I want to do this for my class? Or maybe, maybe I've seen something somebody else did on their videos in the course and that inspired me to do something different. Um, so that's the kind of idea behind mixing both the video and blogging. And then a lot just haven't used Twitter, like, you know, like Alan uses Twitter and you use Twitter and I use Twitter every single day. Um, to connect and, and network. So I think that's that's the three tools we're kind of leaning on and we'll let everyone grab what they want. Did you have any thoughts or questions, Daniela, that you're here as well? You're muted up, by the way. Okay. Well, no, actually, hello, everybody. I, I haven't got any questions. I, was, um, I started uh, the blog today. I uploaded the video as well. And... Um, I have, um, I had never, well, I, I tried once blogging, but, um, but I was not, um, I, I couldn't have it as a, uh, something usual. So then I, I just uh, stopped blogging. So I started a new one um, today cool. for, for the course. And, uh, well, I find this very, I, I find the course very interesting. I hope that it gives me ideas as I wrote in the, in the blog and um, that I can solve some issues that I am having and that I thought I would have and I, that I fear uh, I will have when uh, classes go face-to-face uh, -face again. I'm in Argentina. We are now in, in the second term and uh, we are in lockdown. So uh, everything is online. I had planned to uh, use flipped, um, flipped learning and flipped teaching, the, the flipped classroom uh, this year, but then I had to change everything because apart from being flipped, it was going to be online. It was, so it has become like a lot of changes for my students altogether. Um, so I can't, uh, as I said today in the blog, I can't really say how much um, it, it is working. So I don't know. I mean, the context is very strange. So, um, so well, but, but my greatest fear is how to face a lesson when most students have not done the activities or have not read what you want them to right. read. Um, that's my greatest fear. Now, it's, I, I cannot, I, I cannot um, assess that because I cannot even force students to see me face to face in, in Zoom lessons. So um, there are students who just go online anytime and see the, the recordings of the right. lessons. So it's, it's a mixture of everything. We do what we can do, actually. Uh, but we'll, let's say what strategies and what things we can do mm -hmm. for those students uh, who, who don't do their homework. <laughs> Right, but but well, I'm very interested in sharing experiences and, and things. Yeah, great. It's a good. That's a classic question. And and if I remember off the top of my head, um, I think it's Katie Gimbel who has an excellent YouTube video that she posted years ago to the Flip community about what to do when the students don't watch the videos before class. And then Crystal Kirch also has a lot of good work talking about that and what she calls mm -hmm. a WSQ system, where she asks the mm -hmm. students to watch and then summarize what they watched in the video, assuming it's a video, could be reading, and then mm -hmm. pose questions they have about the reading or about the video. And it's, it's not valid to say, I don't have any questions, because in my experience, it means you didn't watch the video. Um, and then, then I ask them to go a little bit more meta and ask me the question that you think that a different student would ask if they didn't understand the video. So it makes them think a little bit more <laughs> metacognitive about the material. Um, but mm -hmm. yeah, we'll definitely be sharing a lot about that. And I know Crystal has good stuff about that in Katie Kimball. And I totally forgot on the form to ask people where they're from, because it would have been kind of like interesting <laughs> to have a map out of where people are coming from. And I just, I didn't even think about it because it's not important to the course, but it would just be interesting. So 
welcome from Argentina and, and the winter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very cold. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Um, maybe Alan, if if you might have to lean closer to the computer because I think your mic's kind of goofing off. Um, like a lot of what I'm doing with the <laughs> with this setup and the configuration, what we call a connected course. Alan has a lot of experience doing this, and when and I saw Alan do this in the past when I started copying the way he was doing it with Brian Lamb up at Thompson Rivers University and it came out of DS-106. And maybe your thoughts about what it's like to participate in one of these connected courses, Alan. Oh, uh, I love the excitement of uh, when it's new to people. Um, and, and also like when students, like it's their first chance to, um, to publish. Uh, although Laura probably knows it's, it's not like it's always novel to them. Um, and so um, just the, the random connections, and I mean, the numbers that you have and, and your setup already is, is really um, impressive. You know, when I, you sent me the link this morning, you could already see that the, the posts were coming in, uh, which is really good, especially, um, you know, for a class where people are volunteering their time. Mm -hmm. You know, it's different when you, you know, you have the ability to, you know, set aside. And it's free. So there's not like an investment of, I'm going to lose my money if I don't do it as well. This, yeah, this tends but, to happen. You know, on the other hand, what, what happens is, you know, you always get like um, enough people who like stir up enough excitement to infect, you know, everybody else. Mm -hmm. So just, just the ability, you know, as much, you know, it doesn't have to be, you know, you talked a lot about Twitter and, um, but that's not the only place, you know, getting people to comment on each other's blogs is, is really valuable. Um, mm -hmm. And, um, you know, and I know Laura does this too, you know, there, there are ways you can track, you know, comments too, which is really useful um, for you to try to get a picture of what's going on, especially since you have, mm -hmm. you know, two to the eighth, <laughs> I'm going binary on <laughs> 255 blogs. Um, right. you know, it's, I can't it's, I can't see them all. There's just no way. You can't see them all, but um, you know, I always, you know, made it a point to, you know, load them in my RSS reader so you can see at a quick glance what the level of activity is um, and whether there's something new. Um, but you know, also, you know, with the way things are going right now, you know, you have to kind of like put all your expectations of what you really hope for, what people are going to do. Um, and just, you know, take everything as a plus instead mm -hmm. of yeah. um, minus. Mm -hmm. and so right. um, I, I think it's really a great time for you to be doing this because there, there's so much um, to be gained from, from taking the flipped approach, you know, whether, whether we are, you know, you like, like, um, like Daniela, you know, <laughs> inferred is like she's moving between modes already but I, I think the flipped approach isn't really tied um, to whether you're in person or yeah. you're somewhere in between so um, I think it's really exciting and, and just you know with, with 255 people you're going to have a good enough amount of activity um, to keep things going you know, sometimes when you're dealing with a smaller class it's easier to know right. what they're doing but Generally, you have like, you know, a curve of, of participation and generally you've got a handful of people, students who are really active, you know, when you get 250, you know, that's a, you know, you'll get a community going out of that. And, you know, right. Those are the register. We'll see how many people show up. There's been 50 people submit their blog um, form. So that's actually, I'm pretty impressed. It's mm -hmm. only Wednesday and that's due Sunday. So I think, uh, I think by delaying it by a week kind of helped because everyone was chomping at the bit to get started and I delayed it a week. <laughs> it wasn't on purpose. It just, it just worked out that way. And I know Laura's got to leave like at 7.30 ish. So at my time. So maybe yeah. your thoughts, Laura, because you've been teaching online for much, much, much longer than I have. And, and your thoughts about teaching online or blogging, or you could even talk about RSS readers because you're like my go-to for that. Well, I sometimes call my online courses the ultimate flipped course because it's that idea of, you know, the students are, are reading or watching videos or doing whatever and then moving on. And I really like that idea about getting them to think about how the other students are moving on at the same time and asking questions like that. That's actually really cool. But um, I've got 30 students who have started and I'll have 90 students overall. So by a week from today, there'll be 90 students 
blogs in my network. And I'm so grateful to the people who start early because when the students see the other people's blogs, that's how they figure out what they really want to do. Yeah. And you were talking before about um, videos. I'm working on audio with students uh, mm -hmm. this semester because I fell in love with making audio books this summer. I went just crazy with SoundCloud and it has oh. great embedding features for blogs. So yep. if you have some students who really are put off by videos, one thing I'm going to be doing is embedding a slideshow and then embedding the audio to go with it. And that way they can advance the slideshow themselves in the blog post and advance the audio themselves and oh, like have the audio when I was a kid. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Bell, so, so let's go to the next page. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Or you could ring a little bell or whatever. So anyway, the, um, the way that you can embed all kinds of stuff in a blog is why I've kept at it for so long because all the cool new tools that come along, it's like, can you embed it in the blog? Yes, you can, you know, so showing students how to embed, NPR podcasts in there, Lovely. music video, SoundCloud. So to me, a blog is where you write, absolutely. But it's also the place where you embed stuff and put it in context with your thoughts. You know, so here's the video, here are my thoughts about the video. It's all there in one place in the blog. So I can't imagine teaching any other way. And the students really do get excited about it because even if they've blogged before, lots of times the instructors haven't, themselves been bloggers so they don't get all excited the way i do about right. hey did you know you can embed a twitter feed there in your blog you can have right. an actual tweet with all the comments on it and just sh uh, TikTok videos oh my gosh instagram they all want to go in the blog they've got really good little embedding tools so i'm kind of sad that there's not as much rss as there used to be but embedding tools and iframe and being able to embed stuff in blog posts is really that's really fun too. And in some ways that's more fun for the students because I never got them that excited about RSS, but they do get excited about embedding stuff in posts. And I think and it's sometimes for our fun. students, I mean, I, I do this with my students as well. This is how my course is running and, and getting them out of that routine of the five paragraph essay in their blogs and getting them to be more creative and throw some memes in there and go nuts. Yep. Daniela's got your hand up. So maybe did you want to? Yeah, I, I wanted to. I wanted to ask, how do we get to say the other participants' blogs? Um, go to the the main site, and you'll start seeing them. As soon okay. as they start posting, they'll be there. And, I, and I'll right. explain that more. Actually, I'll send out a video um, for the video I send out on Sunday. Will really kind of explain that a lot more. And Alan built this cool thing where there's a random button. And I need to implement that on our site. So you'll be able to just hit the random button. and It'll randomly take you to just somebody's blog post, which is really kind okay. of fun too. Um, so it'll be right. happening probably later yeah. this week. Laura's middle name is random, I think. She <laughs> <laughs> it's true. I love randomizers. So. Yeah, I love the randomizers. <laughs> and um, Alan built that. And I remember we, we kept making requests to have it do different things. And um, there was about audio too, Laura, Clint Lalonde just posted today, he put a plug in on his WordPress site, so that it will read the blog to you with like a kind of robot -y voice, but it's a cool little plug in. So I got to go check that out. I just saw it. Oh, I, haven't, cool. I haven't gone to check it out either. So that's kind of a nice audio mix for free for people that that want to be able to listen to your blog and not have to read it or they maybe they can't read it. That's cool. I've got a, a browser extension that I recommend to my students, which is a text to audio thing. And all you have to do is highlight a chunk of text anywhere in a web page and it will read it nice. to you. So that's really fun. And nice. we're doing microfiction now in my classes. And I learned that a hundred word story takes less than a minute to read out loud. So that's why I got really excited about the SoundCloud. Because if you're recording audio and you flub something, it's just a minute, you re-record it. You know, right. it's not that whole kind of stressful, oh, I just got to the end of it and I just flubbed it. It's like less than a minute, I'll record it again, so. Yeah, I played with audio a bit this, this summer because I took the Creative Commons certificate course and at least one of the assignments, I recorded an audio piece, put it up on SoundCloud and then embedded it inside my, in my blog yep. post for it as well. So yeah, it's, I'm, I'm having a little bit more fun playing with audio. So I'm going to mention that in, in the assignment uh, for next week, as well as um, I'm just reminding myself to talk about RSS readers. I could go a little bit geeky on that. I like to go like low level on some things, but point to the cool geeky stuff that people might want to dive down on, but not everyone does. I'm I like, think RSS it's really readers worth it. Are cool. I think it's worth it for um, people. Yeah. 
to know how to do that. Um, but for many reasons, um, you know, going to the website, you kind of have to like scroll through to see yeah. stuff. So I think it's a, a really good skill for um, people um, to have to be able to have a way to sort of get all the information coming them almost in a, you know, to me, it's like the email inbox form, yeah. you know, the new stuff yeah. is bold. You can, you can just browse across all the blogs really quickly without having to scroll through pages. And, and I pages. think if you see it happen, you, you go, Oh, now I get it. So it's, it's, I think it's something I should record a video about and they'll go, Oh, now I kind of get what this RSS reader is. And this isn't a scary thing. It's really nice. Yeah. Cause you know, I don't know if, if you want to go super geeky, but you know, I, I would try um, with my students, I would like set up um, like a package of all the yeah. RSS. Right. Um, make it easy to pull in. Um, yeah. And I know we're, I'm throwing a bunch of acronyms out there, um, but the idea is, um, is that way people can sort of like, you know, it's easy to scan stuff on these devices, but um, you know, it can be like, especially if you've got a lot of blog posts coming in, you know, and you're going to only see on, on the page, um, you know, you're going to miss a lot. And, and, um, and maybe you're not going to know which ones you've already read, which, you know, um, do your students do this, Laura? Because one thing that's cool that you can do with like an RSS reader, I can say like load in all the people in the course, whether it's 50, 60, whatever. And then they could like put stars and then just choose five or six people they like to follow and then kind of have like a mini feed of the ones that are important to them. I think that might be useful for some students too. Because I'm thinking yeah, about have... that for this course, make, it, make a cohort, an informal right. cohort, because you can't follow everything in a bigger course. Well, I wrote up all my step-by-step -step instructions for how to use InnoReader. So if there are yeah. any students who want to give that a try, it's really easy to do that because the subscription, you can um, just paste in the address of the blog. You don't even have to get the actual RSS yep. address. Yep. It'll discover it for you. So if you want to pick four or five people and just subscribe to their blogs, it's super easy to do that. So. Yeah, I should demo that for sure. And then I'll point to your blog about it. I know you, I know you have it. Laura's my go-to on the InnoReader, and I'm a big fan of InnoReader too. He's amazing. Yeah, yeah. I, I actually, it's my favorite one to use now. Um, and and um, we probably would talk way too much about uh, RSS, but um, you know, what, what I always love is that point where people start to figure out. Like at first, it's like, what do I write my blog? How do I write it? Um, when right. they find their own sort of voice, and you know, my my last couple classes have been you know, teaching. As a more, and it's you know in an English writing program. So a lot of times we had students come in who already think pretty creatively, but often um, for people to figure out like, wait a minute, I don't have to sound like I'm writing a paper. Right. Exactly. I, I can have yep. a persona. Um, I can be serious. Um, you know, I had a student who decided to invent her own language, <laughs> and so she would kind of come up with her own words. Um, cool. And, you know, I had other students who were just really kind of filled their course material stuff with pop culture references. Um, you know, the mm -hmm. joke was like how poor I, the teacher, knew the pop culture. Cause right. Cool. They're trying to, they're trying to get you. Um, awesome. And, and it's fun, you know. So, you know, it also um, kind of, um, you know, it, it changes that, that, that teacher-student space, you know, when, when you're also writing in the same environment. It, and that's where a bit of the meta thing is of, of this is you might see the format that we're doing this course and then it might make you think, you know, maybe I could do this with my students because the, the power of having my students publish in the open is a really mm -hmm. big deal. And, and some of you taking the course will notice this and that's why it's great that some are posting early because you can go, oh, now I kind of get what I should be doing for this assignment when you see someone else's and that's okay. And, and right. it took a while for my students to get that but they love that they can see what other people are doing and they go, oh, I can riff off that and I'll think how to do something else similar or not and, and be creative and, and writing in the open and, and publishing your assignments in the open is a really powerful thing to investigate if you haven't done it before. I've seen some really good things come out of my students. The group I have this semester is nice because a lot of them have taken classes with me three or four times and I'm mm. weird in the way I do things, but now they're used to it. Um, and so they, they cut a little bit more loose and they, and they know how to, they know how to just do what they want to do for, for their learning process and what they're writing about. 
I, I totally rely on that system. I put links in my assignments that go to the blog stream for a particular assignment. So I have in a reader assigning uh, little tags to the different kinds of things students are doing. So introduction posts, their first story, their storybook plans, and those have a URL. So you can just link to it. And so when they click on the link in the instructions, if they want to, they can see what other students have done. Now, some students don't like doing that. It's a real turnoff. But for the students who really would rather look at examples than read the instructions, go right ahead. That's fine with me. However you want to do this yeah. is good. Yeah. Yeah. That's nice. It, it works good. I used to try to encourage my students to use the hashtag homework one or what, whatever the hashtag for the homework assignment. And then the word cloud starts to fill up and they can click on homework one and they're looking at everyone's yep. homework one what post and i've still got ones from like seven years ago or six years ago and my current students are finding the blog posts for my students from the past nice. to work yep. on the assignments and i say well you know throw a comment in there and say thanks tonio for the like great idea and then tonio finds me and he's like ken ken someone just put a comment on my <laughs> blog that i wrote like four years ago so yeah that's exactly. one of my students Beautiful. And and then may, may I ask you something? Um, have you ever had trouble with people not wanting to be publicly yeah, uh, yeah. publishing things? You got to be careful with that. Um, I, I, at the first, I didn't think about it so much because I'm, I'm like a cis appearing white male and I have privilege and I don't have to worry about getting you know, doxxed on the internet and other things and the trolls attacking me. But yeah, you have to have that conversation with your students if you do this. Um, you have to be right out front with them and you have to say when someone does something, puts a bad comment on your blog or calls you out on Twitter or whatever, it's not your fault. Um, I'm here to talk to you about it and we can, we can work out how, what's the right solution for you. Other students, they want to be anonymous. Actually, one of my students right now wants to be anonymous. He wrote that in his introductory post this week. Um, and he yeah. says, I know that someone would, if they really wanted to, they'd be able to figure out who I am or one of my classmates will like accidentally put my name in the comments of my blog. Mm -hmm. And so you have to have the conversation with the entire class about this. Um, mm -hmm. And then I do Bye. give them an out. Like if you don't want to submit on a blog, then just submit on a Google doc somewhere that you can share with me or a Google, Google mm -hmm. drive for right. just with me if, if you need that. And I've had students mm -hmm. that they have parents that are like high level government officials and they just really don't want mm -hmm. to be visible on the internet. And, and that's an option right. too. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's, it's a great right. question, Daniel. Yes. Yeah, it, it is, and I, I try to like, you know, when students are creating their blogs, I really encourage them to think about, like they don't have to name it anything that has anything identifying. Yeah, and exactly. so, you know, some of them just go right in and they'll, they'll just blast their name in there. But, um, you know, as long as I know who they are, um, yeah. it's fine. And, you know, and, and like, it's like the camera thing. It's like, you don't have to, students don't have to publicly <laughs> blog. There's, no, yes. I, I've always, I've had a few where they just want to submit things um, as documents yep. and, 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 okay. it, and it's fine because they can still, there are ways for them to participate, um, mm -hmm. you know, reading, favoriting, um, you know, and they can contribute. Um, so you don't, you know, just take away that idea that students always have to like, um, you know, they, they can present themselves however they want. Um, that's how I like mm -hmm. it. Right. Yeah, because what I what I did this year was to use Padlet. And so I tried to do mm -hmm. something as what you're saying, uh, but it, it's still within the group. So um, it's not open to anybody. And yeah. what I do use is SoundCloud because I find it very useful for the comments that I can leave in different parts oh, well. of the of the track. And that's when the problem started, when students did not, they, I needed the, the tracks to be public so that I could make comments. And many of them started having treble. And so well, I asked them to change their names and I didn't have any yeah. treble with that. But this was an issue at a certain moment. Yeah. That's, what, that's why when you were talking about blogs for, for the whole course, I said, mm, I think that my students, I, I know that there will be some are going to start complaining and yep. arguing and say, yeah, I don't want to, yeah, things like that. And that's okay yeah. too. And, and I've had students and then they find out what it's about and they get it and then they keep doing mm -hmm. it later. I had a student who's in Victoria in my hometown now. She was here and I was like, why are you in my hometown? And she just, um, she was in a magazine and she, she had a blog post in some magazine. I'm like, 
That's so cool that you're still vlogging like four years later after the first experience she had in my course and and her and another friend spent like days make choosing the right themes for their WordPress blog and they went crazy about you know yep. making it the best looking blog they could um, and they weren't worried about the content which was great I mean they were like they were doing it their way and and it's so cool to see them continue that years later they keep using these tools and that's yep. Part of why I'm throwing that at all of you, but mm -hmm. also why I throw those at my students. How are you doing for time, Laura? Because I'm reminding I, you that. Exactly. I was about to say I should go and I'm going to go, but um, I'm glad to be in touch with anybody uh, through Twitter about blogs and blogging, especially RSS readers. Padlet is one of my favorite tools because it has RSS and you can blend that in with the blogs into the feed and stuff. So anyway, I'm glad to answer questions for people anytime if they find me online. So. And I'll share out the links to both Thank Alan and, and Laura when I send out the email with the recorded video. We'll love okay. it. Thank you so much, Laura. It's good to see you. Thanks. It was great to see you, Alan. Good to see you. Laura's amazing. We've known each other online um, since the 90s. Like, I, I probably don't even yeah, know. Since yeah. Um, B to JS. I was just telling John Stewart the other day, that's how I first met you. An ancient <laughs> program. So cool. So but, yeah, it, it's... Um, What's also interesting um, is like when you start to see like um, people, you know, from different contexts, like yeah. maybe from different um, projects and programs, you know, so I would see Laura interacting with, you know, people I worked with at Maricopa and it's like, wait a minute, how do they know each other? Right. And I think I, I, I was interacting with Laura with, uh, she came in one of my old, old open flips from like six years ago or something. And that was before I really knew you at all, Alan. So it's like that the streams come colliding again. Yeah. Yep, it's the internet, right? All connected. See yeah, ya. Well, thanks, bye bye. Laura. And welcome, Rocio. I know you came in, and I didn't didn't welcome you. And Durley's been here since the start. Um, I know she's there and comfortable. <laughs> yeah, so I don't um, want to call it. Sorry for that beep. So oh, sorry. No, go ahead, Rocio. Uh, I want to apologize for coming in late. I was in class, so I was just. I oh, was no, no. I'm trying to squeeze everything in. Um, we're starting classes next week, but I'm already working with the quarter. I, I work in a university uh, for, in, in quarters. So I was actually I'm going out to a class at six. So it's kind of hectic, but it's gonna be fun. I know that. I know it's gonna be fun. No, I, I like these sessions because some people can come and make it live and make it an interaction. There's no way you can get, as soon as you get past 20, it's like, it's too hard to manage. <laughs> Um, these kind of sessions, I run these things called Edu Coffee, and they're they're wonderful. That's why I have the coffee behind me. They're great when there's like four, five, six people, but you can't really have a conversation with twenty, right? So um, it's great when it's this amount of people, and then others will just want to watch it later, and that's fine. Or they'll watch this one and go, "Yeah, now I'm not scared, and I'll, I'll come to the next one." Um, and so th this is why I like to do this, and and I like to bring in friends like uh, Laura and Alan. To, to give a little bit of perspective on things as well. Do you have any other questions or, or Durley? Yeah, it'd be great to hear from well, people's first experience. Um, I want to know like if anyone can give me an advice because I'm an English teacher in here in Mexico, mm -hmm. but I was listening to all of you and I was saying to myself that, wow, it's incredible that you can work with your students on a blog and interact with them and use the blog as an assignment. But with me, my students barely know how to speak speak or write right. or understand English role. and I have like 20 students in all the groups I have like three but mm -hmm. I want to know how to use the blocks to work with them even if they are starting to learn English. That's a tricky one because Durley might have a better answer there because she's got more experience teaching English and I, I don't teach English I teach in English. Um, right. I don't know if she's got her microphone able to open. But um, what Laura was saying about doing audio, I think for language learning, doing audio recordings is a really excellent idea. Um, and, and then they can hide behind the anonymity. They don't have to put their face on it. And the audio practice is really, really important. Um, getting students, and especially in a COVID world, of getting students and teaching them. Um, 
um, Alan and I, our colleague Tannis Morgan wrote a post and, and she says that we really need to kind of let our students know how to do group work and, and really be specific about how they do it and maybe even setting it up. So I would think for language, you'd want to set them up in pairs to have conversations and perhaps record those conversations. Maybe not publish them publicly, but at least share them with you. I think that'd be a really good idea. Um, not necessarily written, like I teach um, in English usually, but my, my, call it, my students might not want to publish in English and that's fine. I say publish in Spanish, publish in English. I get international students all the time and I've had them publish in German and, and French. I'm like, well, sure, whatever, it's fine. I'll just run it through Google Translate so I can try to figure out what you're saying. Because my German's not great. My French is okay. Um, but um, find out what your students want to do and, and let, them, let them go down that path. I think what's important, Montserrat, is to model what you're asking your students to do. It's really hard to tell your students to be bloggers if they don't look at you and go, well, you're blogging too, right? Gonna yeah, I don't want to push them to any yeah. adversity. Good yeah, I, I believe that I, I don't teach elementary levels. I teach at university and I teach basically phonetics. Um, so nothing to do, but I have, of course, I have taught elementary levels at that moment. And what comes just off the top of my head would be to... Um, ask them um, to do certain tasks that they can do. I mean, they can introduce themselves. Mm -hmm. um, they can uh, invent who they are if they don't want to be themselves. Um, mm -hmm. They can describe pictures. They can describe uh, the surroundings. Um, so, Lovely. I know, depending on language, the task could be to talk about their previous um, life before COVID, for instance, uh, if they're talking about past experiences. So depending on, on what you've got um, as language material. So I, if, if I think of elementary levels, if we start just with about to be, well, you could uh, work on um, introducing yourself, for instance, or introducing someone yeah. or talking about a famous person or an idol or someone, someone you admire. So that makes it simple. Um, talking about an actor, an actress, or whoever it is. That's a great point, yeah. Daniela. I don't remember when I was learning thank Spanish. Thank you. Don't underestimate, too, um, what you can do with photos, because it's, mm. it's probably one of the most accessible things for everybody to be able to do. You don't need fancy equipment. Um, pretty much people, that's their primary device. And so, um, I mean, Ken knows, I mean, I love photo like yeah. challenges. Um, get people to like, you know, um, take an image of, you know, try to guess what this object is, or you get like a certain thing of where you ask people, um, you know, to share, you know, how they cook breakfast or what kind of coffee. Um, it's a really good entry point, um, you know, for ways and, and a way for people to choose, you know, they, they, it's not like when you go on video, it's like, you know, you see that I've got this kitchen with these wooden cabinets, but if I'm just using pictures, you know, I get the sort of like, take a selective part of my world and um, right. pick something that, that I might want to share, whether, um, you know, and, and so it's, just it's, so it's cool. a great way to, to like pair, um, you know, the visual with um, the written and the spoken um, that you're trying to learn and teach. And people are always interested in pictures because when I saw Rocio came in right away, I'm thinking she's got some pictures there in the background, like up against the mirror there. And, and, yeah. and obviously we're seeing into the background, I've got mine hidden, but, um, we often see in our students' backgrounds, and that's something that drove my attention right away. I'm like, yeah, she's got some old pictures or pictures of friends or family or something there in the background. And people love talking about photos. That's a great point, Alan. Actually, uh, those pictures are from a K-pop group, BTS. Uh -huh. And that's something that I've learned from my students. And instead of having my family pictures, I have them over there at the back. <laughs> and that's something, actually, that's something that has helped me a lot because learning about a different culture, in this case, uh, Korean culture, has, has made a, a big link with my students, especially the girls. But with the boys has been learning about uh, mangas and animes. Cool. They really love to talk about that. So maybe Montserrat could do something like that. Showing, uh, I don't know, talking about Dragon Ball Z talking about um, Naruto or something like that. Mm -hmm. Those are trending for, for students, young, young learners right now. 
I think. I, I try to be like connect with them and I, I start like TikToking, <laughs> yeah. but it doesn't work. Like I, I'm not a camera person like you can see, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I really try to be connect with them and it's not really working because they want me to dance and do yeah. crazy stuff and I don't know. <laughs> It's hard online. Um, and I think the biggest thing I found with, with getting my students engaged and getting them to open up more is it's a matter of trust. And it, and it usually takes me two, three weeks to build up that trust where they're, they're not going to think I'm going to like give them a bad grade for saying the wrong thing or, or you know, whatever the students are thinking with their teachers. So I think it does take time and that's something I'm struggling with because we have courses that only last five weeks now. So I've like barely got to know them and then I'm saying goodbye. So I've really had to put a lot of effort into the first week of really spending time trying to get to know my students. And, and I think that's gonna be really important and more so now that we're, we're talking through a screen and we gotta be like over the top when we're going through the screen and doing crazy things or I should do this more often. I should put like a video game picture in my background and then the students are going, oh, you play video games like we do? And, then, and that starts the conversation going um, as opposed to just being a boring 50 something year old guy here in front of the screen. Yeah, so, it's, yeah, great point, it's hard to be here and try to yeah. look like a person, like a human to them. Uh, because <laughs> when I was in the classroom, I always have like, my notebook or my carpet with sonic pictures because cool. uh, i'm a fan of that game and then my students went like oh, you play sonic oh, cool. oh, well but you play minecraft yeah. and i was like yeah i play can you give us your username to yeah. play with you in and i was like um i don't think that that is allowed but <laughs> okay <laughs> but being indirect and sharing would be great like Drawing your background with some Minecraft in the background or something. I mean, of course, we got to follow some rules. Maybe I'm I'm bad at like not following the rules and I get away with it. But we got to be careful about those kind of messages we're sending to to teachers that need to be a little more following the rules. But um, yeah, I, I'm I think you're gonna gonna connect with some people and get some ideas over the over the course, and and the fun with seven weeks. Have you got your microphone able to be opened early and I can hear you again? I miss you. <laughs> Yes, I'm here. I was thinking about the Monster Rat experience. I think that, well, I study materials development. And one of the things that she can do is like uh, make activities around topics. Like, for example, they are going to talk about Naruto. So describe Naruto. Or what are the characters of Naruto? So they can be more engaging for them. Because it's not just like, okay, I'm going to give them like impression I know about them about them is more like use the things that they are used to see and watch and listen to come into the classroom to have like a purpose. It's kind of difficult and sometimes developing that material is not easy because it's time spending and look for the uh, resources and you need to learn about those things too. Yeah right. that is the difficult thing. For instance I don't like BTS but my students love it. So I said, okay, what did you know about Korean? So we kind of start talking about that and you kind of start enhancing speaking in English. And I, I'm learning from them. And it's also like, uh, I don't know what age are you teaching, but for example, in my case, I always say like, okay, this is like a learning environment. Uh, you're going to learn from me. I'm going to learn from you. And this is like how the dynamic works. And as Ken was saying, um, the trust within our with our students is quite important in this moment because we are not there every single time and it's something that I don't know we are not that autonomous to be okay self-directed in our student in our activities so this this um, situation takes us that okay we need to do you know, we need to be autonomous because if I want to get this I need to work by myself and that's another thing that I have realized uh, we are not used to work without teachers. So they also need the teacher next to them saying like, hey, this is good, or no, this is not good. Because I try to flip my classes and I have like individual spaces, I have group spaces, I, we are 
all together in one meeting. But they are always telling the teacher like, hey, even for cheer them. So there are so many things that we need to take into account. But more than the knowledge, it's like being supportive. Because for instance, in Colombia, we are still in lockdown. So for them has been quite difficult to know socialize in real life. So giving them that kind of spaces that they can share with their partners and then come and talk to the teacher. They make more uh, engaged than just giving a bunch of activities that mm -hmm. they, okay, like, okay, let's do this, but I'm not really sure <laughs> if this works now or not. So it's more like creating a spaces where they can do something similar what they do in their real lives. Lovely. Um, I just shared in the public chat all four of your blogs. So you're, I know, I know Durley's blog. I know Durley from before, from Cliff Learning and, and other interactions. But all, <laughs> yeah. The rest of you already are, are the ones that have your blogs working and up. Um, I think Montserrat, when I checked yours, you didn't have a post yet. But I, I, that's one thing we can do. And I think it's going to be important in a bigger course. Oops, my dog's not happy. Bailey's not happy. When there's at least 50 something people, um, getting a small group of people that you like to follow their work is a good idea and encourage them. And, and hopefully you'll find others as well. So I want to share out the links to each one of your Bailey's I'm excited. Someone just came through the door. Other thoughts? We're coming up on time. It's like 7.50-ish. Yep. Any other advice, Alan? Thoughts? It, it, might be, um, it might be counterintuitive and it depends on your style, but one of the things that always worked for me um, was like, um, and I didn't plan it, was like making mistakes. Like when the, if the technology didn't work or if I gave like wrong information um, mm -hmm. and you know, you know, the important thing is to correct it. Um, you know, and, and to show that. So sometimes there's all this pressure to get everything right and perfect. And um, I have to tell you, the technology is always going to let you down. It's going to break. <laughs> it's going it's to break. Um, the internet won't work. Um, the students, you know, they'll have trouble doing something. Um, you'll realize that your instructions are missing a key step. Um, and so, like, once you like, like, take off this mantle of trying to be perfect. And the students can see like that you can struggle with things too, but then you can sort of, you know, come around and, and, um, and come to some solutions. And so, um, you know, my approach has just been to like, okay, if I mess up, okay, I'll just have to figure out a way to, mm -hmm. to fix it and resolve, but to sort of, you know, take off um, this idea that I have to be perfect and everything yeah. has to work. Um, it, it relieves a lot of pressure for me. Um, but I think it helps students to see as well that, um, you know, people naturally have to deal with challenges and things. So um, if you're worried about like the technology um, letting you down, I just will say it will happen. Um, yeah. but we're bigger than that. And, you know, what always happens is you improvise or you come up with another way to do things. So when mm -hmm. you know, the Padlet thing, you know, blows up, well, then you have to find, well, maybe I'll do this in VoiceThread or maybe I'll do this in, in Google Docs. And so, um, it's it's kind of the it's a little bit scary but it's also like liberating when you realize you don't have to be perfect it's an excellent point and that, i've always followed that i remember from my first time teaching i would say i'll reserve the right to make mistakes on the board and sometimes i might just make them on purpose just to just to throw people off and start the discussions and get things going because i think it's important to to model that we make mistakes too and then I think students feel better about themselves when they see us making mistakes. I like to leave like fumbling over my own words in a video that I make. I'm like, I'm not going to edit all that out because it's too much work anyway. <laughs> I'm just going to record the video and crank it out. Growth mindset is a much than teaching. So thank you for everyone for being here. This is, this has been really good. I'm, I'm happy. Um, I will be sending out a message and, and letting people, there's people stumbling over things, not setting up their blogs easily. And there's, there's tricks and things and, and I'll send out some messages. I'll, I'll record a couple of videos like of how to publish a blog, how you can, you know, how to put an image in your blog and how to put a YouTube video or an audio or other things and um, try to model that a bit as opposed to me just assuming you can all figure it out. I know you can figure it out, but sometimes it's useful to see someone else doing it. So I'm going to do those kind of things this week as well. 
Give them gifts. And then tomorrow we got the Spanish version. <laughs> You're welcome to join that one too if you want to. <laughs> Alan's been here in Mexico. <laughs> his, his Spanish is okay. I've been in that room with. <laughs> you've been in this house. You've stayed here. Yes. <laughs> Excellent. So th thank you so much, Rocio Montserrat, and there yeah, and Daniela. Well, thank you so much for having for having us here today. Thank oh, you. And come back. Yes, we do this again. Same time tomorrow that the Zoom session's a different link. So if you don't have the link for the Spanish one and you're bilingual and you, you don't you want to go to the other one, just let me know and I'll send it to you. But it's a different link actually to try to avoid confusion of getting in the wrong one. Mm -hmm. Although I might screw right. up. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much, everyone. I'm going to turn off that video.